Hogwarts Castle, a 5-inch gauge locomotive. Part 2, removing the boiler and smoke box. This is the main steam inlet to the cylinder cover, and it comes off quite easily. The one at the other side is completely missing, so I'll probably have to make another one of these to match. And now with the cover removed, you can clearly see the steam pipe into the steam chest. In this episode, I'm going to show how I remove the boiler and smoke box as one unit from the frames. And this one unit is very heavy. Once I start to lift the heavy boiler off the frames, I need it to come away from the engine completely, very easily. So now's the time to remove any connections between the boiler and the main frames of the engine. In this clip, I'm removing one of the injectors, complete with its associated piping. This part is called the reach rod, and it operates the valve gear. And I have to remove this because it goes through the spectacle plate, and on this engine, the spectacle plate is part of the boiler cladding. I've temporarily replaced the pin so that I don't lose it. Using just one bolt, I've temporarily reassembled the other end of the reach rod, just so I don't lose the part. I'm just seeing how much play there is in the valve gear, and it's looking good really. A viewer once commented on the channel, you've got very dirty hands and you need a pedicure, I've mentioned this before, and this is why I generally have dirty hands. My hand is currently in the smoke box, which contains soot, oil, and all manner of grime. Sometimes a few spiders. Putting my hand in a smoke box is not something I do for a recreational purpose. I need to disconnect the superheater feeds to the two pipes that go down into the steam chests. This is a very fiddly job to say the least because you need to put a lot of pressure on this large nut that is very tight, but you can't get the spanner in place at the right angle. I really could do with one of these right angled fancy spanners, but I don't have one of those. It could be worse though, it could be a three and a half inch gauge engine and I can't even get my hands into the smoke box on that size. On most steam locomotives, the blower is a hollow stay that goes down the middle of the boiler. On this one, like full size practice, it's an external pipe. And as the flange is bolted in place to the smoke box with some very long bolts, the quickest and easiest method is to just knock the top off the bolts. I'm using a chisel that I've just sharpened and I'm being very careful with this. And in no time at all, without any damage, the part is removed. All I need to do now, using a small pair of pliers, is remove what's left of the bolts from the smoke box. And as you can see from this clip, these are really long bolts, far too long for this job. As I mentioned in the first episode, my part in this project is to refurbish and repaint the bottom part of the engine, making many new parts in the process. That's the main rolling chassis up to the top of the running boards. Work on the boiler, the smoke box, the cab, the cab roof, etc. is all going to be done back at the steam workshop. And I would think the best plan is for me to complete the bottom end of the engine and take that back to the steam workshop to be fitted to the top part of the engine. The blowdown valve on this boiler is very loose. There's nothing wrong with the threads on the boiler, it's just the blowdown valve threads are not so good. And as I removed it, I found that the boiler was full of water. So here I'm draining the water from the boiler because it will make it a bit lighter when I come to lift it off the frames. I was surprised how much water was in this boiler. The water was probably left in the boiler from the last run, as were the ashes in the firebox. It's a good idea after a run with a steam locomotive to blow down the boiler to remove any impurities in the water, but this hadn't been done for some time. At this stage I wasn't sure whether the boiler was going to pull out of the smoke box. The part that I'm just removing is called the petticoat pipe, and this is used to focus the exhaust steam blast up the chimney. In the top of each of the steam chests, quite sensibly, I've fitted a piece of rag. This piece of rag just screws into the existing threads, which will stop any foreign bodies from entering the steam chest. And by foreign bodies, I mean these very small bolts that hold the smoke box to the smoke box saddle. By the general appearance and engineering standard on this locomotive, I'd already assumed that this engine was built by an experienced engineer, and in some cases I think he used the parts he had, because the bolt heads on these bolts are all different sizes. And once again, look how long they are. This is stupidly long for what it's supposed to be doing. It just makes any dismantling take a lot longer. I took a very short break from bolt removal just to tighten these two screws. And then it was time to remove the last bolt from one side, waiting for it to shear off or do something stupid, but it didn't, it came out quite easily. And now for something completely different. I turned the engine round and it's the other side. 
and you'll be pleased to know that I'm not going to show the full operation. Even I was beginning to slip into a coma doing this job. At last, the final two bolts are ready to part company with the smoke box. And here goes the last one, and Sod's Law says that the very last bolt is going to be a problem, but this is a first, it came out very easily. And now it's quite a simple job to lift the boiler completely off the frames and put it over the other side of the workshop, and I will take this back to the team at the steam workshop tomorrow. A quick wipe over with a cloth just to remove some grime so my hands don't get any dirtier, I can carry on dismantling the engine. Looking at the photographs of the full-size Hogwarts castle, these parts need a bit more detailing. The centre part, which is unpainted, just lifts off to allow access to the lubricator. Which, by the way, is loose. When I move the valve gear, it wobbles about. This will need addressing. I seem to have achieved quite a lot in episode 2, but I must mention that the job itself took a lot longer than the time it takes to play this video. Here it is sat on my rolling road, because the first thing I'm going to do before stripping any of the parts down on this locomotive is give it a run and see whether it actually does run. And here's something for the steam locomotive purists. There is something wrong with this chassis, and it's obvious. Can you tell me what it is? I await your response. And if you want the solution to the problem earlier, please become one of my Patreon supporters. That way you get to see the videos before everyone else. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.